All right, hello everyone. I'm Lonnie. I'm Amberlicious. And we are Untitled Nerd Network. This is episode, uh-oh, four? Yes. Five, four? Four. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Th anyway, th this is called Med Meadowlands, e uh, Sopranos, episode four. Yes. Yes, uh, I told you. called Meadowlands, written by Jason Cahill. Cahill. Cahill, and directed okay. by John Patterson. I have no clue who either one of those guys are, but I'm uh, sure they John have credits. John Patterson has done a lot of stuff. Now, I can't tell you right offhand. I'm actually going to look it up right now while we talk about it. This is the first time ever we have mentioned the creative team behind the show. Right. Um, so, th this was actually a pretty good episode. Like the, the, it uh, was. The, the episodes are building and building and building to better stuff. I think this is a this is a pretty good turning point. Um, because full spoilers. I mean, this show has been out, y'all. This particular I don't even think we need to do a spoiler. Yeah, this, how... this particular episode's been out for about twenty one years at this point. Um, I, I like to think of these reviews as more just fans of the show coming on and just getting a fresh perspective. And review on the show because uh, I don't know. I almost feel <laughs> like ninety nine percent of people who haven't seen this show yet probably won't see this show unless oh, yeah. they're younger and they just want to watch something from like you know classic TV or whatever. And um, but yeah, this show this this episode's been out twenty one years. We're introduced to um, the uh, crooked cop that. The crooked detective that Tony deals with, you know, the dude's like a, I guess, a degenerate gambler, okay. corrupt Hold detective. On. I felt like he had done a lot more than he had, but he basically was just like one of the main directors for this. He did okay. 13 episodes. He did an episode of Six Feet Under, four episodes of Providence, and some other stuff that I don't recognize. Probably a bunch of HBO shows. He probably had like a... But he did die in 2005, and they dedicated an episode. Oh, holy crap. So, yeah, six so. years after this aired, he died. Yeah. Um, There was actually, I can't remember who it was. Um, oh, later in this series, um, one of the guys, who is it? He does the first five seasons, by the way. Oh, okay. One of, uh, one of, like, this is kind of off topic, but <laughs> one of the, later on in this series, I think it's like maybe season three or something like that, um, a very well-known, I can't remember who it is, which is weird because when I watched this, I was freaking out because it's like, um. Okay, you know the guy who plays uh, uh, Happy Hogan on Iron Man. You know, yeah. Tony Stark's right hand guy who ends up kind of maybe having a thing with Aunt May in the Spider Man movies. Mm -hmm. A younger version of him has a major, major part in, over like three episodes in this series later okay. on. Yeah, and, and it, he so plays. That's probably where I felt like I've seen him before then. Yeah, he plays okay. himself. He doesn't play a character. He's like the director early oh. in his career on okay. here. Yeah. Neat. And uh, yeah, well, I say early in his career. Hell, he had probably already been in show business 20 years at oh, that yeah. point. But, you know, but yeah, he, uh, you know, he's like probably about 80 pounds lighter than, and, you know, he's like young. He's like in his probably. Isn't it funny to see people like that when they're younger do stuff like that? Yeah. You're and like, what on earth? like, I didn't even know he was a big deal. Right. You know, until that episode. But anyway, we'll we'll get to that we'll here. To that. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, let, let's let's focus on this one. You know, probably around April or something. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, depends on how fast we blast through. This. Yeah, and it it, it sucks too because I God, I want to watch the next episode so bad. Um, <laughs> because I remember it. It's one of the, like those handful that I remember outright. But yeah, this episode had a lot of good turning points. Um, yeah. Junior Soprano is given the head job over all yeah, the families. Jackie dies. Yeah, Jack that that's a big event yeah, in this episode. It was. Um, I, I felt so bad for them. I felt really bad for Tony. Tony was take it the hardest. Yeah. You know, um, I guess he was the closest to him. And know. of course Christopher comes in and 
fucks it all up, you know? <laughs> all pissed I off. Wa- I want to like Christopher. Yeah. But he needs to count it back about 20%. <laughs> he really does. Like, oh. he needs to count it back about 20%, and he'd be, a, he'd be an all right guy. He'd be really great in the crew. It's just he's young and... Know how that is. That's Christopher. Uh, pretty much. It's like every time something stupid happens. That's it's like Christopher. Fucking Christopher. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, we got that. Uh, the the interesting part that we we both pointed out during uh, early part of this episode, Tony goes and sees his mom in the retirement community, and he brings her some uh, macarons. macarons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He hands them to her, and she for just a Split second. Was excited. Look, has this like favorite. pleasant, happy, excited look on her and face. And then she didn't want to act like she was happy. <laughs> yep. So she was like, well, they're just too sweet. And I was like, seriously, woman? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that's how I, I, like, you can kind of tell now that that's an act. She's just being negative to be negative. Right. She's pushing down her positive she emotions to just put out a negative an, all the time. And. You know, there might be some background to that. You know, maybe... I mean, maybe she feels like she doesn't have a right to be happy for some reason or another. Something has happened that we don't know about. Yeah. You know. And I don't... Maybe things with Tony's dad. Something with that, maybe. And... Even seeing the the whole series, I don't remember what her story is. So... Yeah. There's a lot of stuff I that I am I'm, interested to see why she does. Act that way, or maybe she's been that way her entire life, or maybe they just never address it and just let it die. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, There's, but you know, Tony's trying to encourage her to go out to the community and make friends because she is not in a bad place. You know, excellent place. She's in. It's not even a nursing home. It's a retirement community where basically they're still allowed to do whatever they can for themselves. And have nurses on hand if they need something or whatever. They they were planning a field trip to the city. They were going to do dinner and a show. Like, yep. you know, she's actually allowed to leave premises with people. She's not restricted. It could be a lot worse. And she just acts like it's the worst thing ever for her to be there. Which I can understand. She's doesn't want to lose her independence and that comes a part of you know with age and stuff and a lot of a lot of individuals especially at that age are suspicious of everything oh yeah well like i said i felt like she had the early signs of dementia and her being suspicious like that is a symptom um like they can be convinced of things that never really happened and they're you know she's Grew up in a different time as well. You know, Junior, he's over here saying that he, Tony put her in an asylum. And that's not what happened. That's not even near what an asylum is. Tony's um, visits to his doctor, his therapist, prevented a war between the crews. It really did. Um, okay, but before we address this, let's talk about that dream he had at the beginning. That's exactly like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like pulling up the Wikipedia article right now just so we don't miss anything because there that was a, th- dream this episode was, a was busy. Trip. This episode was so busy. Yeah. Like um, he, he dreamt of having like sexual feelings toward his therapist, which I see that coming a mile away anyway. Yeah, because. Once she finally breaks down them barriers, it's going to be there. Yep. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's just just a thing, you know. Yeah, he already, I'm sure, was thinking about her. And then... Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so you, we, we've got some really deep psychological shit going on here. Because yeah. he walks in, he's like talking to his therapist. He sees uh, one of his like fellow guys walking outside. He's and like, you, what's he doing here? Yeah, and so because he... Because he has that fear... Of people finding out yes. that he's going to therapy. And then she's like, oh, he's my three o'clock, you know. Yeah, and, then, and then he goes out and everybody's in the waiting well, room. Well, his son, he sees his son to begin yeah. with looking at him through the door. 
And then he walks into another room and like all of his guys are in there and freaking Seal is like having sex with a woman and everybody else is like waiting in the waiting room. But, and, okay. The son looking through the door though, that was foreshadowing of the episode. That was his son seeing who he really is. And ooh, he does find out. Yes. That finds out that he's a mobster. He truly did not know he was very naive because yeah. he's at an age where he probably should have figured things out by now but he's so self-absorbed and sheltered yeah. he didn't know and like sister had to point it out for him because the kids at school were like everybody knew but him everybody knew but him because how that happened is you've got um i want to get back to that dream here in a second yeah. <laughs> because that, that that was deep we that will was, yeah. that was very deep um, he, he gets into a couple of fights with a kid at school who used to be friends with him and they get into it, you know, they have a couple of fights. Um, Tony or, uh, 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 AJ's mom, uh, wants him to pay for the shirt that got ripped during the fight, mm-hmm. which is $40. AJ tells his friend, Hey, you know, you owe me $40 for that. And they, then they end up fighting again. Right. And uh, so finally when they, they schedule a fight at like 3 o'clock, you know, at the old, you know, gravel quarry or whatever, mm-hmm. everybody shows up to, you know, watch a fight as freaking kids do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, whatever, that's a human thing. That's not a kid thing. Let's just say that's, <laughs> well, they meet on the playground. That's the kid thing. It's not yeah. the event for a fight. <laughs> you know, it's not out in front of freaking Alan Golds or anything. Yeah. And so um, that that's a Chattanooga reference. In case y'all, there's so, really fights. So that was like the worst bar to pick. Actually. Yeah. So, um, anyway, they uh, it was <laughs> so the kid instead of fighting him, hands him forty dollars, and you know everybody's like everybody figures it out right away, except for him, and he was yeah, like, oh, he, he was, was like, just scared of me. On and everybody was like, oh, <laughs> you know, which Tony sees the kid's dad, and so. But he saw him before that went down. But you know, what was it? The same day? It was before. Or before it was after the, the kid had a chance to tell his parents what was going on. Yeah. But before the forty dollars. Yeah. So I'm sure the dad saw Tony, knew what was going on, knew the conflict, because I'm sure this kid's parents yeah, are a little more he was in like, tune. I'm not sure that our boys get along. Yeah. And of course, you know, Tony's been so out of touch and involved with everything else lately. He didn't know either. You could tell that kid's parents knew what was up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they, uh, I'm sure the kid's dad just gave him the $40. Just like, just go, give him the just money. Give him know? the money. Let's make peace. You know? Here's that tribute. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, right. So um, anyway, that that was that was a pretty, and then, you know, he goes and tells Meadow, AJ does, his yeah, sister. Yeah, because he knows something's wrong. Yeah. So that's, you know. I'm glad that he felt comfortable enough with Meadow to be like, yeah. hey, this happened at school today. What's up with this? Yeah, it's like regardless of whatever back and forth they may have, they're still siblings. Yeah. And they are, they they have that in common. You know, right. they're the children. Not to mention he's older now. Yeah. You know. I mean, he's not much older than he was when the series started. <laughs> That's how teenagers mature, though. Pretty quick. They you know, mature like, pretty quick. Uh, and that Stuff took- like that took a few months to just really settle in and figure out, hey, there's something. Um, what, one, one thing, um, he was having, it, during the dream, Tony was really checking out his doctor, and then, like, he goes into another room, and then, you know, her back is to him, and mm-hmm. then she turns around, and it's his mother, and there's, like, some... Yeah, when he's freaking out over everybody being there and stuff, it turns yeah. out... And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, that, there's a lot of deep stuff that I'm not really qualified to discuss. Right. <laughs> uh, I almost feel like they probably did some... Um, they probably did some consulting with actual... They probably did. Like psychiatrists and things. Mm-hmm. People who knew the meanings of you know certain thoughts and feelings and dreams and... Mm-hmm. You know, they. I'm sure they put a lot of stuff together here. That's a. Uh, th- this was a very psychologically deep episode. Very, very deep. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And again, our well, what I've kind of called, you know, no offense whatsoever meant by this, but what I've dubbed our uh, titty watch, <laughs> which is, uh, this was like oh, fourth, yeah. fourth consecutive episode with topless women at the Right, club. because, I mean, we're I guarantee we'll see topless women every time just because strip club is a main point where they all yeah. meet. So we were talking, so, what, last last review mm-hmm. that um, we were wondering because anytime they showed a woman topless, she didn't have a speaking role. And this time, there was a topless, two or three topless dancers, and... They announced on the news that Jackie died. Yeah, and so one of them actually was like, I'll always remember where I was at this point. And, but when she spoke... They only showed her from, like, the neck up. Yep, that's it. They did not show her chest. And in my opinion, that was a really weird framed shot. It It didn't look right. It did not look right. It's like they wanted to give her a speaking role, but they didn't want to go to the trouble to cover her up while she was speaking. Yeah. Yeah, That's exactly what happened. And it's, I just, my main question is, why do they have to be covered while they're speaking? I don't know. I don't is know if it, maybe we're reading too much into no, it. No, I think there's probably some kind of like contractual thing or something. or something that prevents that. You know what I mean? Because I don't know if they start speaking topless, does it become an adult show? You maybe know maybe what it I mean? may, like maybe it has something to do with like the Screen Actors Guild or something, yeah. some kind of like union rule. Yeah. Because I've seen shows on HBO like Katie Morgan. For the longest, had a show yeah. on there where she narrated the whole thing completely Complete naked. Topless. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and uh, but that was also considered an adult show. Yeah, and I'm that's sure they what probably, I'm wondering if that's the line right there. It was one of those things I said I was going to look up between reviews, and I never did. But I'm going to. Yeah, I, I almost I really don't want, want to know. I I'm almost so just want to follow know. it. You know, I don't know. We. I might. Look I at still want to follow it. I still want to point it out every time it happens. Um, I yeah. think it's weird. Um, Christopher <laughs> uh, confronts Meadow about the oh, crystal Lord. meth. Picked her up at fucking school. He is super paranoid. Yeah, he and, is. But you know what? That's what meth does to you. Yeah. Yes. Like, it makes you super, super paranoid to the point that you will have delusion. But anyway. So they, they kind of got that taken care of. He, he knows now that Meadow didn't rat him out. That and now we've kind of figured out that Junior did it, and but anyway, that led into Tony. Um, uh, Dr. Melfi, his therapist, actually told him, you know, you have to give his mother, yeah, and yeah. his uncle. You have to, well, it was more no, his it was mother, just his mother, because he hasn't mentioned his uncle in therapy yet, and yeah, he has. I haven't heard, oh, yeah, yeah, he's mentioned him two or three times. Talking, he hasn't mentioned specifically what's going on, but he's just mentioned the trouble he's having with his uncle, but he hasn't. Going into details. Yeah, but it's he, been more about his mom. Yeah, he, he's done it two or three times, so. but they are focusing heavily on his mom. And his doctor basically told him, hey, you have to give her the illusion of control. Yeah. Even though she's not, you she, have to she's let her like, think you that. have kids. You know, yeah. sometimes you need to let them think that they have control of the situation, which is true. That's, so, like, the very next day after Jackie dies and there's, like, this power vacuum, you're kind of led to believe, especially after Junior put a hit on one of Christopher's guys and... You know, did all that, that there was about to be a war, and Tony storms off, and you're like, oh, here we go. And um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he, even the guys at the strip club thought he was doing that. Yeah. So he but goes instead, and he talks to Junior, sits down, and tells him, it's like, hey, you know, Sopranos, uh, it's been a long time coming, the, the Soprano needs to be at the top, I want that to be you, and... Uh, then I mean, he does a really good trade with him, too. Yeah, he ends up getting like a union contract and some other stuff. He, he, he got some money money out of it mm-hmm. and some power too yeah but you know when something happens to junior tony's I mean, next exactly that's how he solidified that he was next is what he did um because you know junior's probably not going to be around yeah forever it's, well it's like he said he's just happy with the title anyway yep because you know he still called the shots. guys were questioning hey you think you should have done this like yeah you know got the title he's happy we know i really run things blah 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 
and they all agreed with him. Yep. They all agreed with him and thought, well, as long as he holds to the money end of what he gave you, we're really going to be in it, you know? Yeah, like we've, we're, you're going to be next up in line, you're mm-hmm. getting all the money out of it, and you're still technically calling the shots, even though he's the figurehead. It's true, it's true. Yeah. As long as he minds his P's and Q's with him. I'm just like, this show, I'm just, I'm just fascinated by the... The power plays oh, and the, yeah. the politics of it all. I, 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 like, there's just so many. And everybody's dynamic with each other. <laughs> yeah, there's so many facets to this show. It's Great. just, yeah, I love just everything that's going on. And, you know, it's like, it's it, it started out, and it now it took four episodes to really just be invested into it. You know, now you're just like, what the, what the hell's going to happen next? I don't know. I was pretty invested the first episode. Well, I was too, but now I'm to the point where I'm like, God, I don't want to like wait another five days to watch. I want to just That's true. just hit them left and right. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> even though I've already seen it, um, well, let's see. Did we miss anything else? Um, I think we got everything. Covered his That's mouth. it. Yeah, yeah. We've well, I mean, much... he had. Oh no, we missed one thing. He had um, his police friend follow his therapist <clears throat> because he's that paranoid. He just wants to make sure, because he keeps asking her, who are you? What are you about? Because he, I imagine being in the position he is, he's paranoid that someone else has planted her to see if they can get information or, yeah. you know, this, that, and this. And so he just wanted to make sure she was on the up and up. Yeah, and his cop assumed that she was like somebody Tony had a thing with. Because he was like, you know, why are you, you know, eating hamburger when you got prime rib at home and crap like that? And she had no clue what was going on. She just thought he was a crazy idiot. Yeah, because Tony didn't want to be like. But we're we're starting to get a little closer and a little closer and a little closer to those right. wa- those barriers being broken down. Yeah. We're already there because she opened up to him during therapy. Yeah, she was and so upset that she opened up to him. She like she was zoned out during therapy, yeah. and that was the mistake that cracked the door open. And, um, yeah, so, whew, oh, a little side note, the crooked detective is played by the same dude who was the dad on Home Alone, and, uh, that was funny because, uh, I belong to a couple of, like, Sopranos fan groups on Facebook, and, you know, every Christmas, you know, the meme goes around, oh, you know, what did, you know, Kevin's dad do to afford this house, (laughs) and, like, they had a picture of him off the Sopranos. I mean, that's... Accurate. Take, taking dirty money from the mafia, you know. That's probably it, yeah. So, okay. Uh, anyway, we will uh, see y'all later. Uh, that's it. Oh, no, 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 no. My, uh, um... Mario Kart. No, not Mario Kart. No. But by the time this airs, Mario Kart's going to be a thing oh, of the yeah, past. Oh, that's true. Never mind. Um, uh, We're not doing this live. I but... Ratings. we got to give a rating. Yes. Um, that, that was what I was wanting to get at. The, this episode, I, yeah, I'll let you go first this time. Let me go first? Yeah. I went first last time. Uh, I'm going to give this a, give it a nine. It wasn't perfect. It's not really, ble- you know, good. There was just so many plot points to, that unraveled, you know? Yeah. Like, Jackie died. Then Junior became, became the top. Yeah. And, you know, his son, his son's character developed a little bit, and I enjoyed that. It's really the first time we've seen yeah. almost any development from yeah. him. And so, it was nice to see him be more than just a, oh yeah, Tony has a son. You know. And so, it was interesting to see how it Tony's lifestyle, you know, trickles down to his kids, even that young. Even that young. To be like, this boy just paid $40 so you wouldn't get in a fight and cause trouble between adults. Um, (laughs) The therapist opening up, seeing his mom actually have a little glimmer of happiness. There is a human still left in there. Like, that was a good thing. And it was, it was a solid nine. Okay, yeah. 
I was going to say, it, the, the episode itself was an 8, and all these extra things bumped it up to a 9 for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, Christopher seeing Brendan. Uh, yeah. Finding him. It was a very emotionally charged it, episode. Yes, so, yes yeah. it was. Yeah, solid 9. Um, th- there were still just, you know, it, it wasn't perfect, but it was, yeah, it was pretty it damn good. Yeah, it like, show-altering, but it furthered plot points enough where it was an Yep. All right. Well, that's it. We'll see y'all next time. I'm Lonnie. I'm Amber Lucia. We are Untitled Nerd Network. We will see y'all next for episode five, which was, uh, what was the next one? College. I can't wait for that one. Like, y'all just, y'all just go ahead and get ready. I'm, that, that's one of those episodes. Lonnie's ready. Yeah, very much. All right. We'll see y'all next time.